live from Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. This is your motivational, sensational, inspirational, educational, aspirational, international, keenly awaited, daily created, highly anticipated edition of the Afternoon Swing Training Floor with your humble host, Jeremy Alexander Newsom, with another daily dose of mentally delicious brain food reminding each of you to love life, live life, and trade it. Folks and friends, family from around the entire globe, how are each and every one of you doing on this majestically marvelous Monday? In fact, today is Merchant Monday, also a little bit of a blend of Mentorship Monday. So much goodness happening, so many things to talk about. I am just pumped up to dive in. And in fact, you probably already noticed and have received many hours of recordings. You're probably watching this as a recording. But for those who are watching it live, type in a one into the chat pane. If you can hear me and see me, okay. Beautiful. You can't see my screen yet. I haven't shared it yet, so let me go ahead and share my screen. Down, 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 down. All right, screen share turned on. Beautiful. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do today, my friends, this afternoon, is first some fun little conjecture stuff that I think you will all find very interesting. And then of course, we're gonna review some individual, direct, specific swing trades. So the first thing I wanna note is, uh, I talked about it some in the morning room, but this red line, type in a three into the chat pane if you can see some random red bars. So here, these are the red bars I'm talking about right there. Those are an exact replica and a copy of January 2018. How cool is that? Now, the January 2018 time frame. So let me just kind of zoom back over here. This is what I noticed as a pattern. There was a lot of similarities, tons of similarities, in fact. And I really felt like and noticed that there was a reason that we were running up a little too hot, a little too fast without any kind of pullback at all. So I thought to myself, you know what? There's probably a need to pull back some in the market. So what I did is I took the um, October to January bars right here and just drug them over to where we are now. Because uh, two years ago, I mean, same exact thing. Like there's no way you shouldn't have been making money on the market over the last two, three months. If you weren't making money in the market, you were just doing something drastically and insanely incorrect. So really good move, strong continuation, beautiful trend. And what I did is I just copied and pasted it and moved it over to now. So that's what this red bar right here is. And what's phenomenal, ladies and gentlemen, is it seemed for now to call the top of this move in January to the exact penny. So this red bar right there was the very last day of that move in January before we started having a much bigger pullback. And that was the exact, almost of the day and price of where we started selling off. Kind of incredible. Peter says, it kills me when you say that because I've had so many losses the last few months. Yeah, man, I'm sorry, Peter. I wish there was more that I could do to help, man. If you join me, sign up for Real Life Trading, trade with me for a few months, I will help you turn that around. Because yeah, the last three or four months has been the most bullish, easy market I've traded in a very long time. Since January of 2018. <laughs> so anyway, it was pretty amazing, pretty incredible. And so now what we have to do is figure out what we're gonna do from here. So I'm gonna delete this red line because again, these bars are just a replica. And if it worked once, I'm gonna see if it can work again to give us some insight on what could or might happen from here. Doesn't mean it's gonna to have to, but it means that we're probably gonna get pretty close. Let me see, so bars pattern. I'm gonna come over here and let me just go a month or two into the future. I'm gonna drag this over and just kind of see where we're at. Really cool little pattern. Bill says, how'd you get those red bars? I just showed you, my friend. Just showed you. Okay. So that's what we have. All right, that's what we have. So Bill, go to uh, this little bar. If, you're, if you use TradingView, um, go, go below the X, 
A, B, C, D pattern right below those and then click on what you want to draw and there you go. So again, this is what could be, I think, worst case scenario. I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm just saying it's a possibility. So I do personally plan on a little bit more selling out there in the market. So let me go ahead and just hide this for a second. Who wants to tell me what type of gap did we have today on the SPY? Black candle gapping down. What type of gap is that? Black candle gapping down. This is a retest gap. Did we retest? Question mark. And the answer is yes. We did retest a little bit. So that means that we have fully the opportunity to go lower. Here's what I think I'm gonna jot down regarding the market tomorrow. I think we go higher Tuesday, Wednesday. Again, that's just what I think. So my plan is if we gap up some tomorrow, I'll look to be bullish for two, three days on the broader markets and likely my day trades. If we gap down tomorrow, the bears will continue into February. Pretty simple. That's kind of my current plan, thoughts, and concise approach and analysis about what I believe could happen over the next two or three days based on the trend, how strong it is, and the gaps. Arat says, where do you see the retest? See this little upper shadow right here? That's pretty much it, my man. Right, it means the stock gapped down, trade lower, traded up, and then started getting a little bit of selling. So that upper shadow, that is the retest. Now we might not be done. Okay, we can retest much larger than that. We can do something like this, where we fully fill the gap and then we go a little bit lower. I'm not saying we're gonna go down for sure, my friends. What I'm saying is I want us to go down. I would like us to go lower. The market is extremely high right now. And man, oh man, it would make so much sense for us to get some kind of pullback. I just don't know how big the pullback's gonna be. Looking at this chart, I think worst case scenario, 300. William says, what's the definition of a retest gap? Black candle gapping down or bullish candle gapping up? Matt or Ashley will be happy to send you all kinds of articles, eBooks and or videos. You can get as much information as you want, my good friend. Yeah, brother. All right, so that's kind of what we have and that's what I'm looking at. So I would love a pullback to 300. That would be incredible. I just don't think it's gonna occur. I think we're gonna get a little bit bigger of a bounce and we won't quite go down that far. I'm thinking that again, we'll fill this gap to an extent, trade down a little bit lower and then chop around and then go higher, but we'll see. All right, Ashley, I was just looking for you. So let me go ahead and do that really quick. And then what I'm gonna do, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm gonna pop into some individual stocks. Matt says pullback is like taking a breather, like a rest before climbing the mountain. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Falco says we do have an open retest gap around 294 to 295. This is accurate. And in fact, we also have an open retest gap from right here as well. So I think this would be an amazing spot for the spy to pull back. That's what I'm targeting, 310. I would just be a giant fan of that area for a pullback. Really, really excited. But we still have this zone as well. Back in October, that's when we just started running and going bananas. William says, who do I email? All the info that you just suggested. It's actually in the chat pane, Mr. William. Scroll up about two inches from your eyes, go to the chat pane. Those videos are already posted in the chat pane for you, my friend. No need to email, it's already there for you. Also, if you're one of yours here, if you can change your chat to all panelists and attendees, so that everyone can see your comments. If you want to, that would be massively and wildly appreciated. Cool deal. All right, squad, here we go. These are the stocks we're gonna be looking at today. And give me three seconds to pull these up. Here you go. So every single day, what I do is I look at stocks that are interesting for one reason or another. 
either we found them in the day trading room, either they were requested to me from a trader, uh, someone was looking at them or asked about them, I got an email, a message, a Slack, a tweet, somebody was requesting it from somewhere, or I just happened to find them later. So what I'm gonna do is go through this list, and then after this list, I will be happy to talk about what we're gonna look at tomorrow as we build a new list overall. So, pretty simple stuff, let's get started. First on the list, ladies and gentlemen, is Tilray, T-L-R-Y. And Tilray had a little bit of a gap down today. It was actually a pretty cute gap down today as well. The interesting thing that I see right now on Tilray is you had a really, really massive bullish candle come in, and then that bullish candle automatically got taken out. Um, yeah, you had some selling the very, very next day. So big, big bearish candle right there. Really interesting move and a strong, strong approach. Ellen and Slavi are already requesting some stocks. So Ellen and Slavi, I will put those both on the list for tomorrow. Shopify and Peloton, got it. On the list for tomorrow afternoon. So Tilray, ladies and gentlemen, really quick question. What is the trend on Tilray? What is the trend? What is the trend? Bearish. <laughs> trend is down. <laughs> yeah. Is it, it's at least not up. Now, here's what's interesting. You do have tons of volume coming in on Tilray, and it is occurring at or near a previous support. So if you're looking at going bullish down here, what you're trying to do is pick the bottom. And picking the bottom is fun. It's exciting, it's very profitable, it's just extremely hard to do. Kind of like picking a top. It also takes a lot of time. Meaning very, very rarely, when you're looking at a massively strong bearish downtrend like Tilray, will you get one of these? Boom and bang. It's very rare that that happens. Usually you accumulate, you chop around, you trade sideways, you do one of these for a while and then you go higher. There are obviously signals and volume and candles that can help us kind of know when to get in and when to get out. But right now, my friends, I would kind of have to say if you're playing Tilray, you most likely just want to go in the direction of the trend. So for whoever requested Tilray or however you're looking at trading it, I'd probably say just stick to the bearish trend. It looks mostly safe to do that right now. And the only way we'll get in bullish is if a really massive hammer or some type of trapping candle comes in over the next few days and gives us some type of opportunity to get back above the daily moving averages. So right now the daily moving averages are bearish. I'm not excited about Tilray. I'll put it in the list on Thursday and we'll go from there. So Thursday, I'll look at Tilray again uh, to see if it does something interesting. All right, I had a request for XLRE, which is the real estate sector ETF. Matt, did you know this existed? A real estate sector ETF. So instead of trading real estate or buying real estate, you can trade the e-stock. Peter says, please add glue and CGC. All right, I'll put those on the list for tomorrow. Okay, so XLE, this is a ETF for real estate and this is the weekly chart. Any guesses on the trend for this one? What are the guesses on the trend? It's bullish, that is correct. So that means you wanna buy it as low as you can or look for places to go long. Keep it simple. You'll hear me ask that question a lot during this week, what is the trend? Because a lot of traders massively like to overcomplicate their trading. They like to do things that are really, really cool. I like to do things that are profitable. And if they're cool, great. <laughs> so this is the daily chart. We know that it's up. And here's a resistance. So is this the spot to buy XLRE right now? Yes or no? I would argue no. Nope. You don't want to buy at a resistance. You want to buy at support, which is 37.50. Now, you have two choices from here, my friends. Choice number one, if it pulls back into this short-term resistance, you could add a small position here. 
maybe buy 10 or 20 shares. Matt A says, would you sell the double top? I would not, Matt. Can you remind me why? Because the trend is bullish. That is correct. <laughs> trend is bullish, so I don't short bullish trend. I just buy the dip. It's easier, more profitable. All right, so XLRE, you could do two things. Again, you can wait for it to pull back into this support. You can add some position. When it trades back down to 3750, you add a little bit more position. That would be choice number one. Or choice number two, if XLRE breaks out and makes a new all-time high, do you buy right then, ladies and gentlemen? Is that when you get in? Is that the time to do it? No. No, it is not. It's not the time. Then you'd wait for a retest of old resistance, new support. You would buy the S curve and you would buy the pullback. So you would wait. And that's how I would play XLRE from here. So whoever requested that one, that's my analysis. Next on the list is British Petroleum, ticker symbol BP. And BP, this is a fun one. We look at BP very, very frequently in the afternoon swing trading room. Uh, it's a stock that's pretty disciplined and very fun to trade. Here's what I am looking for on BP, is if you come in here and adjust the chart for dividends, you'll actually see a, an entirely different chart on BP because BP pays really, really good dividends. Robert says, BP, permanent limit buy at 36. Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much how you can play this one. What's interesting is you have a nice trend here. You have a little bit of a lower high here. These are the long-term moving averages on a monthly chart. And if I pop over here to a weekly chart, here you go. The weekly 200 simple moving average is at 34.90. So if you're looking at playing BP long-term, that's probably the only way you would wanna buy it. When I say long-term, I usually do mean four or five months or longer. BP right now is just hanging out. There's not much to do with it. It's not really exciting. And there's not a lot of premium for put sales either. Ram says, I think I'm gonna look to sell an iron condor. There's not a lot of money in British Petroleum Ram for an iron condor. It's too sideways and too blue chippy, unfortunately. Not that much premium. You might be able to find some, and if you find some, let me know. But a 35 put sale for March uh, pays 41 cents, which is not terrible. It's not the worst premium I've ever seen in my life, but it is a decent spot if you wanna own shares at 35. For me personally, I'm just gonna wait for BP to possibly come down to 35, and then I would buy some shares there. Other than that, I'm just waiting. BP is on my sideways, boring, yawn fest type of stock. Buy it as low as you can, sell it as high as you can. The last two, three places that uh, we performed really well on BP was down at the 36 region. So it hasn't gotten down to 36 since October and I'm kind of hoping it can do it again. And if it does it again, I'll look to buy later. Frank wants to look at PCG. Um, I will put that on the list for tomorrow. So tomorrow's list already filling up. All right. Next on the list is Etsy. Let's go check out Etsy. Take a little ETSY. And Etsy, this was a really nice trade that a few people are still in. So what you're going to notice on Etsy, if I come out here to a weekly chart, what is the primary trend on Etsy, ladies and gentlemen? What do you guys think? Primary trend on Etsy, go. Bullish, that is correct. So you're looking at playing bullish. Bullish to a little sideways, yep. But there's, there's some sideways movement, but it's bullish for the most part. And uh, what, we, what we found on Etsy, this is the daily chart now, is you had a really strong gap down on uh, this day right here. So what type of gap is that? William, you've learned about retest gaps. What type of gap is it? Black candle gapping down, retest gap. That is correct. So it's a retest gap and it retested. 
and then it rolled over. So now bigger retest gaps, the thing is on big name companies like Etsy, very frequently you will get a gap that will fill. And what's interesting is it did fill this particular gap on Etsy. So this day right here, which was last week, that was the gap fill on Etsy. So it came all the way back to the low of the day before it gapped down and it filled the gap. This was a position that we were going long on Etsy. 43.82 with a protective put at 40.82. The reason that we were using puts on Etsy instead of shares, sorry, instead of stop losses was pretty much because Etsy is a longer term buy low, sell high type of company. Fundamentally, I understand how they make money. I like the company. I know a lot of people who use them and I didn't want to get whipsawed out of a position. So I want to use protective puts rather than stop losses. The good part is they never triggered. So right now, what Etsy is doing, my friends, is it's battling the 100 simple on the weekly and the 100 simple on the daily chart. So what I'm going to do, in my personal opinion, is kind of consider a really nice hammer candle right here on Etsy. I like this hammer candle. I like the fact that it's above the moving averages. And I'm going to give it one more day. And we're going to come back to Etsy tomorrow, pretty much based on this hammer candle and see if I want to play this bullish. In fact, if you watched me day trade this morning, type in a one. If you remember a very similar candle pattern on a similar stock that we won on today. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So exactly the same candlestick pattern that we played on ticker symbol L-A-K-E this morning for a nice win. So therefore, I'm gonna give it one day. We're gonna see what it does. I'm gonna come back to Etsy tomorrow to see if we can take this as a really quick, fast swing trade, bill paying type of trade setup. All right, so Etsy on the list for tomorrow. Next, let's go look at Wix. I'm a very big fan of this company long term. Huge, huge fan of this company long term. I use their product. I like their fundamentals. I like everything about the company. And if you have a long enough time horizon on Wix, you're probably going to win. Long enough time horizon would mean owning some shares for at least a year or owning some very long term call options or maybe even some put sales. What is the trend on Wix? Greg says it's bullish. That is correct. Now, I've been bullish on Wix for a long time. Uh, and Peter, you were talking about uh, losing a lot in the last part of 2019. Again, man, I don't think you're a real life trading subscriber and into the trading rooms. And if you are, email me because I'd be happy to help you. But I, I don't think you're a real life trading subscriber. The reason I'm bringing that up is because it's companies like this that I've been bullish on for a very long time. And there's a lot of people making some serious, serious money on stocks like Wix. Let me kind of come back over here for just a moment and show you when I really, really started keeping an eye on Wix. Uh, obviously, it wasn't the exact IPO, but this is when I loved Wix. It was all the way back, December 2017, when Wix was trading at uh, $58 a share. Now, for many of you, Many of you would say, oh, Jeremy, this is a double top. Type in a one if you're like, yeah, this is a double top. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not a double top because this right here, this volume is, a, is trapping volume. That is exhaustion volume right there. It's not a double top. This is a natural pullback into a really beautiful trend. And this was trapping volume. Plus, I love the company, love the products, love the fundamentals. And this was back in 2017 at $58 a share. Right now, Wix is at $139 a share. How would you like to start looking at buying Wix back in 2017? Because again, in the afternoon room, one of my goals is to help each and every one of you spot good companies, talk about why they're good, talk about where to buy, and talk about how long to hold. And I updated this particular idea for many, many weeks at a time. This was December, five days later, a week later, a month later, three months later. So this was the trade, uh, that was the analysis, and look how beautiful that bounce occurred. I mean, that is a 
home run. Even if you don't buy that many shares, it's a beautiful setup. It's a gorgeous entry. And all you need is that one trade. <laughs> In all essence, I mean, if you're buying a thousand shares, spending 58 grand and it goes up to, you know, Wix went up to 150. I mean, that's a 3X return. It's not bad. So anyway, what I'm seeing right now on Wix is I personally see a double bottom. I see a close above the neckline and I see a potential retest. This is a weekly chart. So again, I do like Wix on a long-term scale. And I think you could start tiptoeing in right now on a longer term position, either shares, or if you wanna get into some leaps, you could get into some longer term calls. But this was a really, really pretty retest of this pivot right here. Resistance, nice pullback to support. So if Wix starts breaking above the high of today, I would expect it to be bullish. Mark says, I'm mighty proud of my 10 shares of Google, up 23%. Dude, that's amazing. Great job, buddy. Because again, you're right, ladies and gentlemen, I've been helping people buy some shares of Google for a very long time. You do not have to have 100 shares to make money. Matt says, when can you exercise an option? Anytime, or do you wait for expiration to approach then exercise? Well, the option has to be in the money for you to exercise it. And most people normally wait for the expiration. Lita says, what strike for a leap on Wix? I would buy the 130 for as long as you can. The 130 call option on January, 2022. That's only $3,600. So Peter, does that answer your question? Mark says, small positions can make money. That is a factual statement. So again, that's my thoughts on Wix. January 2022, 130 call option. If you're looking at buying a leap, most traders, uh, Peter says, I can't afford that though. Let's keep waiting for another one that you can't afford. 3,600 bucks though, it's not that, that's not that much. Matt says, what is a leap? Ooh, we will send you some videos, Matt. They are free. You can talk about what a leap is. Long story short, it's a long-term option. All right, next on the position is Enphase Energy. E-N-P-H. And Victor Gonzalez has played some really fun in phase. So in phase, oh, that is a good gap. Mm. Mm. That is a very, very pretty gap on in phase. Um, wow. We have a ways to go until earnings. How did this five minute chart play out on in phase today? Yeah, that is not too bad. Victor says, I sold some 2022.50 puts on Enphase. Nice to know, Victor. Thanks for letting me know. Um, honestly, team, we're gonna have to watch this one for the next two or three days because here's what I want on Enphase. I'm gonna go ahead and write this down and I'm gonna put it on the list for Tuesday and Wednesday. I want a small inside high wave candle, and then a break lower. Uh, Jack says there's an open gap to the downside on end phase back in early December. It's a very small opening gap, but you're right, December 2nd to December 3rd. Correct Amundo. And Victor says he has a March 2250 put sale on in phase. All right, my friend. Well, you did very well on your last in phase trade. So why not do it again? And hey guys, if you're wondering what trade I'm talking about, let me see if I can find it. I'm pretty sure I posted it. I can't fully remember if I did or not. No. Okay. I didn't post it. I'm not gonna be able to find it right now. So you'll just have to believe me, but uh, some traders, here 
at RLT, we got in bullish on in phase down in this area and wrote it up really, really nicely on the upside. If you're wondering what signals helped me get in bullish down there, very easy. I use two whole signals. You ready? Let me zoom in a little bit more. So again, the two signals that I use to get in bullish on Enphase down here, hammer candles at the 200 simple moving average on the daily chart on a bullish trend. That was it. That was all we used. <laughs> 200 simple moving average, hammer candles, and then we got in bullish. And that was a great trade. It was a really great trade. Serena says, did you have to watch a lot of happy days to like that word? I love it. I think I tweeted it to Harry Winkler. Uh, sometimes. It depends. I, I use a lot of different words. So, yeah. Uh, also, this candle was a beautiful, beautiful hammer off the 200. That one's nice. And here's your morning star reversal pattern. And again, it depends on your risk. Obviously, ladies and gentlemen, it depends on what size you want to get into the trade. But you have these hammer candles, you know, entry would have been $19.12. So $19.12 getting in bullish on end phase. And I think we got out at 24 and some change. That's a really strong win. And that's a beautiful, beautiful trade. And my buddy John Salvio actually stuck in and kept trading it and made even more money. So that was incredible. Chris says, do you record these sessions? If so, how can I view this morning session? So let's answer two questions. Number one, would this be a valuable product if I did not record the sessions? So what do you think, Chris? If I did not record the sessions, would it be a valuable product? The answer is no. <laughs> so therefore, I do record the sessions. Number two, the morning session is already in your inbox. So check your email, check your inbox. I've already sent it out to you. Enjoy. Watch it and have fun. There we go. All right, so in phase, Siggy says, am I bearish on it? Um, not long term. Not long term. It's just giving me a potential bearish signal, which is this one black crow candle. So it's a one black crow at a resistance. I'm not extremely bearish, but I think we could make a little bit of money if in phase energy drops just a few points. So I'll keep an eye on it. Maybe we play it, maybe we don't, but I will come back and watch it tomorrow. All right. Next on in phase, next on the list is CGC. So I actually already had this one on the list. CGC and Tilray. So canopy growth. This one is working on a bottom. I don't know if it's gonna happen yet or not. But I do think we have probably the candle that I want to see us get above before I really start playing more bullish positions on Canopy. Uh, I did do some put sales on Canopy and they expired in January and there's actually some good premium. I think I might do it again, but it would have to be over earnings for it to really work out. So let me see, February week one. Well, there's actually still some money, believe it or not, for put sales. So if I was selling a put on canopy growth, it'd probably be 17 before earnings. And there is some premium. It's not sensational, but it's not bad. You could get about 15 cents. Maybe if canopy growth dropped a little bit more tomorrow, you might be able to get 17 cents, which is 1% premium for two weeks. That's really not that bad. So I am gonna keep an eye on this particular pattern, mostly because there's a lot of volume coming in. Volume, 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 volume. I do not know how Canopy Growth makes money. I have not really looked into the fundamentals of the company that much. I don't specifically like the company long-term, nor do I use any of their products. So this would not be, for me, a very bullish longer-term investment, but it would be something that I could watch for a aggressive, swing trade. So what I'm going to do is we'll come back and look at it tomorrow and it'll be a very fast stock to pass up on and do something later if we do not get a close above 2246. What I want is a close above 2246 and if that happens, beautiful. 
Peter says, I was looking at selling credit spreads on that just a few hours ago. Cool, man. Right on. There is definitely some volatility to be sold on Canopy. So Peter, this was the last uh, option trade that we did on Canopy Growth was a put sale back in December. Here you go. I'll put that in the chart pane just so you can kind of practice and kind of see what I like to do and what type of charts I like to sell. The implied volatility was 100% and the stock was at 21 and I sold a $15 put sale. So that was a pretty massive drop and uh, that one expired worthless. So Johnny says, I do not have the replay in my inbox. So what do I need to do to get the replay? Uh, email me, Johnny, because you should have it and I'm pretty sure you do, but if you don't, it's okay. Email me, jeremy at reallifetrain.com and how about I forward it to you, Johnny? And then I'll make sure that you have the previous ones. Whiskey, you have it for sure. If you don't have it, it's in your, your spam. So check your spam, check your spam folders. I'm 100% positive it's out. I know it's available. It might be in your spam folder though. So check your spam or email me and I will forward it to you, whichever one you prefer. All right, cool. So Camp and Growth, we're gonna come back to it tomorrow. Craig is requesting Pinterest. It is on the list for tomorrow. Next on the list is Kronos, C-R-O-N. Jack says, I don't have it either, just FYI. You do, it's just in your spam. It's there. I definitely sent it out. And there's also a chance that you guys click the unsubscribe button. So if you unsubscribe, then you definitely did not receive it because you unsubscribe from my emails. So uh, email me if you did not get it and if you want it, I will be more than happy to pass it along to you Jeremy at reallifetrading.com. Frank says, you have to be the most patient guy I've ever seen. I received the email. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. <laughs> Whiskey says, not in spam. Is it in small segments of three or eight minutes long? No, it's a one video that's 33 minutes long. Lita said, did you have to sign up separately for the morning session? Yes, ma'am, you did. You do indeed. All you have to do to register for both trading rooms is go to reallifetrain.com and click on this link and register right here. We're gonna make it better in the future. There was a lot of traders that had extreme confusion about what time everything started. So if you sign up through this, you will get two separate links. As you can see, this is the time. And again, we're gonna do better at making that more clear and more obvious next year or next time we do it. But uh, yeah, email me. I'll be happy to send you the, re the recording that we sent out today and it should be good. Serena says, thank you again for your patience. My pleasure. I'm trying. <laughs> I try. Uh, okay, so Kronos Group, Kronos, CGC, and Tilray are all pretty much the exact same thing. Whiskey says, that was clear on your site, but the link and the heads up that came out said 8 a.m. It did, it said 8 a.m. Central. You are 100% correct. It said 8 a.m. Central. So it's one of those things. Nicholas says, Jeremy, have you thought about hosting a trading boot camp here in Nashville? I've already done two. Nicholas, where were you? <laughs> I've already done two, man. Labor Day week. So yeah, I've thought about it. I've done it. I've rocked it out and it was amazing. So Kronos Group, CGC and Tilray are all pretty much the same. Bottom line, I'm waiting to go bullish. There is a possibility that some bullishness can come into play. I'm going to give it some time. I like the bullish volume and I'm being patient on buying down here. So I'm pretty pumped. Greg says, I'll see you in the DC area next month. Yes, sir. I am fired up. It's going to be great. Carrie has asked about AMD two times. Let me put AMD on the list because there is earnings and I could be happy to, I'd be happy to look at AMD for you guys today. All right. So let's go look at Apple and then Amazon. Apple on the daily chart, finally gapping down. <laughs> 
Oh man. So here's my thoughts on Apple as crazy as it sounds. You're going to have to more or less say this candle and this candle, it could do the exact same thing. This is going to sound duh, but one of two things are going to happen on Apple. It's either going to do this or it's going to do this. I don't know which one it's going to do. I know earnings are right around the corners, ladies and gentlemen, but type in a seven. If you know, I've been bullish on Apple for all eternity. Every video I've done, every stock review I've ever done, every video I've ever done, I've always been bullish on Apple, always. So Peter, if you haven't made money on Apple bullish, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Like it's the most easiest thing in the world. The amount of money that this company makes and the amount of products they sell and the, the, how well they do, it is so bullish. Look at this hammer candle. Like this hammer candle is ridiculous. Greg, Axel says, Greg, I'm in DC. Nice. So Axel, if you want to come to a trading thing that we're doing in February, uh, shoot me an email. I'll send you the link. Jeremy at reallifetraining.com or maybe Ashley or Matt will be able to send you the Eventbrite for the DC meetup. Mr. Wilcox says, mother-in-law has been in since 98 cents. Nice. Nice. It's amazing. Carrie says, what would be a good options play on Apple for earnings? Do you really want to know? This is the one that I think is make, makes the most sense. And this is the one that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to sell a put at 250 on Apple for earnings. Naked put, I don't mind owning shares. I'm going to sell a March 250 put sale and I'm going to bring in a dollar 40 worth of premium. I want shares here. Matt says, what does a long lower wick mean on a hammer? It means buying pressure. Buying pressure, my friend. Carrie says, I cannot afford that. Hmm. I wouldn't do an options trade over earnings then. If you can't do this one. I mean, they're all going to cost money. You know? They're all going to cost something. I'm more just a stock fan. I don't really know what the best strategy for options is going to be because Apple doesn't normally gap that much, Carrie. That's the thing is it generally doesn't gap that much. I don't really know what option to play. Honestly, um, you could do a 300 put and a 330 call. Uh, but that costs, you know, for February, regular February, $300 put costs you $800. And a 330 call option costs you $400 for February. I, I can't sell a bear call spread on Apple because it's against the trend. Um, and again, I don't think Apple's going to gap that much. So I'm personally just going to sell puts and that's really it. Lita said, should I roll up my March 220 short put to 250? Uh, absolutely. Apple put sale over earnings. I don't think Apple is going to gap much on earnings, but the after effect should be fun. So I'm excited, Carrie, to see what it does after it gaps down. Um, I'm selling this premium and volatility and will buy to close for a profit or get put 100 shares at 250. How amazing would that be? Question mark. So neutral. And that's really it on Apple. I mean, I want to buy Apple as low as I possibly can. It's an extremely bullish company. Philip says, could do a cheap butterfly one way or the other. Just guess the direction. I'd probably go with puts then, realistically. Matt says, are you naked when you sell your Apple puts? Yes, that is correct. All right. Matt says, isn't that risky, selling naked? No. 
Not if I want the shares. Selling puts, Matt, has the exact same risk profile as owning shares. Most people just sell far, far too many. So if you sell one contract, if I want to buy 100 shares of Apple at $250, then there is no risk for me on this trade because I'd be buying Apple $60 cheaper than it is right now. All right, cool. Um, Ashley said, did you need this? Yes, I did need that. Um, Axel. Axel, Axel, give me a second. Where is Axel? Axel, man, you guys are chatting fast. All right, Axel, I throw you the link to the meetup in Washington, DC. So if you're in the area and want to come, swing on by, my man. Okay, next on the list is Amazon, A-M-Z-N. Amazon, so far, Mr. Squiggles is nailing this trend direction on Amazon. So it traded lower, it traded higher, and then it had a nice little drop. So Amazon, long-term, I'm extremely bullish on, but this is a pretty decent gap down, and I do not know what's gonna happen on, on earnings. Here's what I think Amazon's going to do. I think eventually Amazon's going to come down to 1651 to trap everybody and then bounce. If I'm going to play Amazon, I'm going to play it bearish over earnings and then a longer term bullish perspective. So for my really advanced option traders, I'm going to do a bear put spread and then I'm gonna do a bull put spread for longer. So this is almost the exact same thing I did last time. And unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, I won't specifically have time to explain this particular strategy, but just know that I have videos on it. And if you really wanna know, you can email me. Uh, we can figure out something. This is what I did last time that worked out very, very well. I, think, I figure I'm just gonna do it again. So last time I did a 1600, 1500 December bear put spread and that cost me money. And uh, so that would be, that means I would do a February. So Amazon's at 1800 right now. So I'll do a February 1600, 1500. Wow, that only costs two bucks. Okay. So this is what I'm looking at doing. This is what I'm looking at doing. 1600, 1500 bear put spread only costs about $2 of a debit actually. So that's a really, really good risk reward ratio just in case Amazon poops its pants. So that's a bear put spread for February 21st, 2020. Again, this is a purely just in case. What's very interesting, Carrie says, what month? Let me know if I can make that more clear, Carrie. So on Amazon, if it does gap down, let's say it opens at 1700, this option will increase in value. Maybe not tons, but it'll increase some. And then again, if you have a disastrously horrible earnings, and it gaps down and really runs, that option can become very viable for really quite inexpensively. And then I would look to sell a March, let's see, March 15, hmm, 1540, I could sell for five and then I could buy the 1500 for four. Mm, it's really not that much premium, actually. I was hoping that it would get more because right now what I'm looking at is the 1570, 1500 March bull put spread. And that would bring in, let's see, 15, 1570 is actually a decent premium. Let me try 1530. 1530, I could sell for at least $5 and I'd be able to buy the 1500 for $4. So again, that's really, that's only a dollar of premium with $30 of risk. So that's not that great. 
It's not bad, but it would make this cost even lower. Red says, may I ask, where do you find all these option prices so fast? I have my thinkorswim option chain pulled up on another screen, Red. That's the answer to your question. Uh, so yeah, so 1530, 1500 March pulpit spread, you're only gonna get a dollar for that for a $30 risk. I don't really like that risk reward. So I'm gonna wait and just play this one. Just in case Amazon gets absolutely train wrecked on earnings. I don't know if it does. I don't expect it to. Amazon bear put spread over earnings. Just in case Amazon gaps down on earnings. Dot, dot, dot. It's a little bit of a neutral strategy, uh, but it's only gonna cost $2 or $200 per contract. Misty says, hi, my name is Misty. This is my first time here. Nice, glad that you're here. I'm gonna do my absolute best to make things as simplistic as I can, but for a lot of you, I will be covering some advanced things from time to time. So again, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, just wait until you do know what I'm talking about because there will be a time where you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, the other thing with Amazon is I do know a few traders who are going to put some limit buy orders. I call them puke orders down here. I think that's valuable. So again, Amazon long-term will grow. It's just going to take some time. Chris says, it's just been Christmas. No way earnings gap down. Well, I mean, you know, we'll see. I wouldn't say no way. <laughs> Rosa says, when are you putting the bear spread on Amazon before earnings? Uh, market's closed today, so tomorrow morning. All right, that's Amazon. Next on the list is Netflix. We might go a little bit long today. Uh, Netflix is down, had a strong gap down today. Had a very, very bullish candle two days ago. And realistically, I'm just gonna wait on Netflix to see if it can do something exciting. So this is a big, big pattern on Netflix. They already had earnings. I like their earnings a lot. This is a massive triangle that Netflix is in. And at some point, I'm expecting Netflix to potentially break out of this triangle bullish. I don't know if that's gonna happen or not, but this is a pretty decent gap. Uh, this is a little bit of an evening star reversal. So. If Netflix gaps down tomorrow, I actually don't think I'm gonna be extremely bearish. I would rather look to buy Netflix either as a day trade or as a swing trade down at about 335. It is a one black crow gap down. It is a pretty strong candle. Uh, you had a really nice candle that came in this day where the high was 359. So if you're looking at playing Netflix, I think 335 limit buy or all the way down at the 50 EMA at about 316. Usually what I refer to people trading Netflix is very simple. If you have a Netflix account, type in a one if you have a Netflix account. If you have a Netflix account, just buy three or four shares at a time at good prices and then hold them until they go higher. That's usually how I've been telling people to trade Netflix. So wait for it to pull down to 316, buy three shares, $900. Wait for it to come down here, buy three shares, another $900. And then at that point in time, it'll probably bounce up to here and you could sell it and then you would pay for an entire year of your Netflix subscription. Ram says, is that dollar cost averaging? Yes. Chris says, what caused the Netflix gap? Very profitable earnings. <laughs> they had very good earnings and they gapped down. So yeah, that was a gap. All right, so Netflix, buy as low as you can, buy small size and hold until you make more than you pay for your subscription. That's how I would play Netflix, buy as low as you can, looks great long-term. All right, Tesla, a stock that I'm extremely bullish on. I know it's gonna have earnings and it's gonna be a fun one to play. It's gonna be very expensive as well. Very pricey. I am not long stock right now on Tesla. The only thing I have right now is option sales. I have put options on Tesla all the way down at 175 for January, 2022. So I am bullish on Tesla. She will go higher. 
It is an extremely good company to buy the dip on. But if you're looking at playing Tesla, I think you would probably play a strangle. Strangle makes the most sense on Tesla to me. It's going to cost you some money, but I would go with a 490 put on Tesla for regular February, and that's going to cost you about $1,700. So 490 put for February is gonna cost you about $1,700 and then a 600 call for February. And that's also gonna cost you some money. Uh, that's gonna be about, oh, you know what? I would just buy the put. <laughs> I would just simply bet on Tesla gapping down on earnings. I don't necessarily think it will. I'm just saying the calls are extremely pricey. Wow, that is pricey. You know what? Here's what we could do. Uh, since it's over earnings, I don't think Tesla is going to be at 700 by February. So here's a play that you could do if it's over earnings. I would consider 700. 705 February bear call spread. And that would bring in, let's see, 700. Uh, that bring in about a dollar actually, give or take, let's say 70 cent limit. And then I would buy a 490 put for February. If you want to play Long put 490 February. If you want to play Tesla over earnings. Adam says, any update on the delivery of your truck? No update right now. So bottom line, what that would mean is if Tesla gaps up, I do think it's going to run higher. And believe it or not, this $700 call could be in the money if Tesla gaps up. So just understand that you're going to have to hold through a little bit of red and what you'd be saying is you're betting against the trend on this trade. You're saying, all right, well, if Tesla gaps up, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to absolutely scream higher. Trade up into this resistance and then maybe pull back some, and then this put would become worthless. If Tesla gaps down, this is going to be a very profitable trade. If Tesla doesn't gap at all and opens flat, this option is going to be extremely reduced in value, and this one will work out pretty well. So pretty much you're expecting, or if you take this trade, you're hoping or betting on a gap down or no gap at all. If you have no gap at all, there's still ways that you can turn this trade into a less of a loser. And if it gaps up, that's kind of worst case scenario for this particular trade. But as long as it doesn't gap up too big, you should win. So if you're looking at playing Tesla over earnings with options, this is a strategy you could consider. I'm not personally bearish on Tesla over earnings, although if it gaps down on earnings, we're going to have a fun opportunity trading it. Cool. So that's my thoughts on Tesla. Let's go look at Chewy, C-H-W-I. Chewy stops me out of a swing trade just days ago, and it looks like it whipsawed me out. So let me come back over to Chewy and see if I want to try this one again. A little bit of a morning star reversal the last three days on Chewy. You're at a little bit of a resistance line uh, and we're above the 100. Let me come back to Chewy tomorrow. And if it still looks good tomorrow, there's a chance I might try Chewy once again because it does seem and appear that I just got wicked out of that particular trade. Chuck says, what about a 490, 480 put spread? Um, go lower on the lower put. Do like 420 or something, because Tesla, if it gaps down, you want as much downside possibility as possible. All right, Baidu, B-I-D-U. So Baidu, beautiful gap down this morning. I really, really love this retest of the 200 simple moving average. And I love the fact that earnings is coming around the corner. I got a text message this morning. Let me read it to you, because I think this is a really good opportunity to play 
uh, let's see. So the text message that I got this morning, how do I have 143 text messages? Um, I had a trader say before market open, how does a 130 call option for June look on Baidu? And that was at market open. So what I'm expecting it to do is something like this, this, and this. That's my plan on Baidu, ladies and gentlemen, but I am pretty bullish on it. I think long term, it's really, really trying to form a base and we are making higher lows and higher highs. So I'm gonna give some time. I'm gonna give it a little bit of, I'm gonna be a little patient on Baidu. I do think the broader market and some of the China stuff can slowly evaporate and kind of just trade sideways a bit. But rest assured, I am looking at playing Baidu bullish and there's a good chance I will play this one bullish over earnings as well. And I also might be buying a few shares of Baidu coming into earnings also. So that one should be pretty cute. And I'll put that on the list for Friday uh, later this week. Okay, next on the list is Twitter, TWTR. And someone's asking to put something on for the list for tomorrow. All right, Twitter gapped down. Um, it's kind of a cool little gap down on Twitter. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Again, I'm going to wait, but I'm going to put this on the list for a day trade tomorrow. That's what I'm going to do. Tuesday morning, Twitter. Because I don't love the swing trade, but I said the exact same thing on this day right here. Exactly the same thing. I said, I don't love the swing trade, but let me watch it for a day trade. If it gaps up and continues higher tomorrow, I'm going to go bullish. End quote. It's exactly what I said on January the 6th. And that was a really nice day trade opportunity. I think I'm going to watch it for the exact same thing. Again, don't love it for a swing trade necessarily, but I do kind of like it for a day trade. Long-term moving averages, uh, we'll see. You just have a lot of long-term moving averages are kind of trading sideways and I'm just going to give it some time and wait it out. No trade right now on Twitter, but that is my analysis. O-K-T-A, Okta. So Okta has an evening star reversal pattern. Here's your evening star. Here's your bearish gap and go. There's some support down here. I do have a few traders who are in Okta long-term and they really, really like the company. I don't have any position at all in this one. But if I did, I'd be looking to buy in the 115 zone. So if I wanted some shares, if I wanted to pick up a position, it'd be around the 115-ish price on OKTA. I'd wait for a pullback into that price and I would pick up some shares. Honestly, just trading sideways, it's a really nice bullish trend. And eventually, this one's gonna have a really pretty breakout. You have a nice triangle forming on OKTA. And a lot of people love this company, big picture, long term. I haven't poured over the research and the fundamentals specifically, but looking at the chart, it does look nice for a breakout and a continuation at some point in time. Okay, cool. Next is Roku, R-O-K-U. And Roku, a lot of people were asking me about this one over the last two or three days. And here's what I expect is going to happen on Roku. I really like today's candle. I really like the breakdown. And I will be looking at playing either some put sales or a bull put spread if and when Roku hits the 200 simple on the daily chart, which is 117.20. For right now, I kind of expect Roku to retest a little bit and then give some rollover action over the next few days. I don't know for sure if that's going to happen. But that's what I'm watching for. And Roku can be a little bit chintzy at times. So I'm going to kind of expect a pretty nice size retest uh, on Roku. Let's go pull up a moving average that Roku loves to battle. Wow, 133. Okay. So if Roku trades all the way up to 133, I'm probably going to short it and just play it for a really quick uh, aggressive trade. Matt Long says, I'm bullish long-term, but it's gonna be choppy short-term. Yes, I agree. This is the monthly chart on Roku. It's a bullish trend, it's a very nice pattern, but it needed to rest, okay? There is such a thing as too far, too fast, so it's just resting. 
And it's going to hang out and do one of these things for the next few months before eventually going higher. So I am uh, looking at the chart, bullish long-term, makes tons of sense on Roku. I absolutely get it, totally understand it. And I would simply say, um, coming up in the near future, I'll be looking at playing some type of put sale or bull put spread as we approach the 200 simple moving average on the daily chart. But until then, I'm probably gonna look to short it around 133. Okay, so possible weekly options newsletter. Next on the list, we only have a few more, is Data Dog, D D O G. Data Dog. And this is actually a swing trade that real life trading is already in. So we did have a gap down and it did get bought up today. We did not quite hit my target to exit Data Dog at 4478. So what I'm gonna do for those of us in a swing trade on Datadog is actually increase the stop loss, put it below the 50. So this way we shouldn't hopefully lose more than an R on the trade. And I will be getting out um, before the end of February. New stop loss. So what I'm now gonna do for all of those who follow or subscribe to Real Life Trading, I'm gonna update uh, new stop loss on DDOG swing trade. Okay, and then I'm gonna come over here. And I'm gonna put that in the swing trade current month. So this is a list of all the open trades that we have previously, and I'm gonna put in new stop loss. All right, so new stop loss updated on Datadog. So that way, if it continues to bounce, great. If it doesn't, we can lose small. But I do plan on exiting that position in the not too distant future. All right, another one that's been very profitable for a lot of traders is the Trade Desk, ticker symbol TTD. Most of the traders who have played the Trade Desk have done so with put sales because it's a pretty volatile stock and a really nice bullish trend. Right now, the trade disc is at a really strong resistance. And it's probably going to hang out here for a few days or a few, for a few weeks. But worst case scenario, if we trade back down to the support and bounce. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but I do expect the trade disc to just trade sideways for a while. If you have more than 100 shares, you could consider a $300 covered call that expires before earnings. That probably would expire worthless. Uh, earnings are in February, so you could probably do like a February week two covered call on the trade desk. But for right now, I'm going to wait it out. Again, if we get some bullish moves in the market tomorrow, we start taking out some of the highs of today's candles, I would assume that we're just going to continue higher in the broader market. The trade desk is probably not much of a different type of approach, but I don't have a new trade set up on that one right now. These were the ones that were added pretty recently. Party City Holdings, P-R-T-Y, because I gotta. Party City, here's the weekly chart, really strong bearish trend. And I'm actually still surprised they're in business. This is one IPO that I have not touched because I've never shopped at Party City in my life. And the people that have, uh, they don't shop there very often. Now, the interesting thing is, I think that there could be a shot that this is exhaustion volume on Party City, which means that maybe the bears are tired of selling this thing nonstop. So potentially, just potentially, we can get a really small little bullish move on Party City. So here's the setup that I'm gonna do on PRTY. We're gonna get in at 298 if we go higher, and we're gonna set a stop loss below here at 256. So this is gonna be a stop limit entry, right? Which again, will not trigger unless we make a new high. And then I'm gonna exit a small position, a quarter of our position at 339. Because the thing is, or at least my thought is on Party City, if we close at some point above the high of this candle, I think we could squeeze out some people who are shorting this thing and it could go a little bit higher. So I actually kind of like the trade setup. I like the candles and I'm gonna make that an official trade. New official swing trade on PRTY. 
Now I'm gonna come in here and put it in our journal. All right, so today is 1-27-2020. And again, for anyone who thinks that real life trading is a good value and you wish to subscribe and sign up for RLT, you'll get access to the trading journal along with Slack, along with pretty much everything else that we do. So I think it's an average trade based on a retest gap and it is open because it's not triggered yet. So that is Party City, PRTY, 298, getting in if it breaks above that price and not before. All right, two or three more. Square. So I actually already have a weekly options newsletter set up on Square. That was from last week. Everyone's going to get a new weekly options newsletter that comes out tomorrow. And Square is a very high candidate for that setup. But between now and then, I think this is going to be a pretty reasonable trade setup that I will post. Uh, and we'll just have a few positions on Square, potentially. I'm looking to do a March $70 call to buy on a pullback on Square. So let's see here, 70, and I think we could try to buy that around 450 with a stop at $3. 450, uh, and I'll do a stop loss. So this is a March $70 call. So pretty much just buying the pullback and the stop loss would just be right below all these candles, which is relatively pretty close to three bucks. $3. And that would realistically be it on square. Just trying to buy a pullback. Right now, the bid and the ask for that option is 520. So trying to get about a 70 cent pullback on square into those call options to buy the dip and set a stop loss at $3. Or if you want to play shares, honestly, if you have a long enough time horizon, you're probably going to win on square. But I do like that trade. It's also a potential weekly options newsletter candidate. So we'll keep a close eye on that one. Caterpillar, ladies and gentlemen, has a really nice gap down. Every chart that I look at on Caterpillar seems like it's going to go a little bit lower, even if it's just until earnings. So what I'm going to kind of do is just watch Caterpillar again. Unfortunate that earnings are just right around the corner on most of these stocks because it's going to keep me from doing some swing trades on it. But you have a really interesting gap over here on Caterpillar and right here. So this is a retest gap and this is a retest gap. So my question is, will this happen and then this and then this? I wish I knew for sure, but what I can say on Caterpillar, at least for right now, is based on this gap, I do think it's gonna go a little bit lower. So I'm gonna put this one on the list for tomorrow in both the morning day trading room and I'm gonna put it on the list for Thursday's Transportation Thursday. I'm going to keep an eye on Caterpillar. I do think it could go a little bit lower with this particular gap. And you already have two bearish days in a row. Uh, it's going to be tough to play, but we're going to watch it. We're going to see it. We're going to find out what's going on. Chris says, how do you know when earnings or dividend is due on a stock? There's a bunch of different ways, Chris. But I use a charting software, and you can see in the charting software that it outlines it for me. So the D stands for dividend and the E stands for earnings. Rosa says, can you explain a retest gap or do you have a video on it? I do have a video on it. I actually have about 412, but I will have either Matt or Ashley send you a video on the retest gaps. Rosa? All right, let's look at two more. VFC. So VFC Corporation. Wow. Big pullback on VFC Corporation. Ooh, look at that. It's getting really close to the 100 simple on a weekly chart, which is $80.64. So if you're looking at playing the pullback on VFC, if you're looking at buying it, this is probably where I would keep an eye out on buying some positions. Again, you can see it's a pretty good bullish dividend paying long-term buy the dip type of company. I don't know if I'm going to do an aggressive swing trade on it, Although, if it pulls back another $2, I think we'll have an opportunity to watch it for a swing trade. Earnings is already over. You had a massive gap down on earnings, and I do think VFC is going to go a little bit lower until it bounces. 
So let me put this on the list for Thursday. We're going to come back to VFC and we're going to find out if we can trade that as a long-term trade. And then last but not least, I had a request for AMD. I don't think AMD's earnings are until tomorrow. Um, and honestly, guys, AMD was the best performing stock on the S&P in 2019. And right now, it's just extremely, extremely high. These are the all-time highs right here on AMD. So I just can't buy it up here. I can't. I got to keep waiting. So for me on AMD, I'm either going to be day trading it or looking at buying pullbacks. Uh, if you're going to play options on earnings, you could play puts. I get it. It makes sense to me. And again, it's quite extended. And if it gaps up on earnings, I will probably fade it most likely. So we're going to all see me trade this week a lot of these particular stocks on earnings. Most of the time, ladies and gentlemen, I wait for the gaps to occur and then I trade them. So every now and then, if I can find a good trade, I'll do an options trade over earnings. Or if I like the company long term, I'll have some shares over earnings. But AMD for me, I love it for day trading. It's really fun. I do like it for swing trading when the time is right. But at this exact moment in time, I want it to rest, chill out, pull back, trade sideways, do something. Just rest for like a second, and then we could look at going bullish. Whew. All right, that's the Monday. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of good content, I know. A lot of good information. I appreciate you all being here. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about what we're going to look at tomorrow. Tomorrow is Tech Giant Tuesday, which is most people's favorite trading day. Um, so give me three seconds. Stocks for today. And tomorrow, I have on the list so far, CRNC, TGNA, GoDaddy, and these are all the ones that were added today in this trading room. Pinterest, uh, PCG, Etsy again, Chewy again, Micron, let's look at Nvidia while we're browsing, XLRN, Snapchat, FireEye, Ping, Uber, LOK, STWD, Disney, JIMA, all right. Cool deal. Well, friends and family, that was an amazing Merchant Monday. I hope you kind of felt like it was at least somewhat valuable. Even if we didn't take tons of trades, we did a lot of analysis, and I'm sure one of those stocks helped at least one of you. So again, this is a request by design trading program. So if you have a stock that you want me to look at, write it down, and I'll check it out. Adam says, you're amazing, Jan. Thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate those kind, valuable words. You're amazing. Freaking love you, bro. Team from around the world, you are incredible. Make sure to watch this recording. Check it out. I'm going to be back tomorrow doing it again. Same time, same place. And until then, love life, love life, and trade it. You guys rock. Bye.